So you have eight former football players from the University of Iowa. They are demanding $20 million in the firing of coach Kirk Ferentz over the racial discrimination they'd encounter while playing uh, for the University of Iowa. So the University General Counsel's Office released its response to a 21 page certified letter dating October the 5th from civil rights attorney DeMario Solomon Simmons of Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is representing the players. Now, of course, they said they will decline the monetary and personnel demands they have from the letter. So the players also call for the firings of offensive line coach Brian Ferentz, Kirk's son, let say, and athletic director Gary Barta. They say, now Solomon Simmons' letter uh, said if demands are not met by Monday, the former players are prepared to file lawsuits seeking damages and unlawful mistreatment they endured. Now he said they didn't respond, the attorney didn't respond to uh, the Associated Press, which is good that they didn't do that. He said the players say that they were prepared to proceed the lawsuit to ensure they are rightfully compensated for their emotional, mental, and bodily damages, and that Iowa is appropriately held accountable for its unlawful discriminatory misconduct. So say the former players are Akron Watley, Aaron Menz, Jonathan Parker, Marcel, Jolie, Maurice Fleming, Reggie Spearman, Kevante Martin Manley, and Andre Harris. So the brothers are saying that they were treated completely, you know, discriminatory at this college. And they recruited them to go to this college. They didn't beg these people to get in their college because every time our young brothers are out here, they, they just couldn't, can't wait to, they fawning over to get these brothers to their college. That's the reason their colleges are where they at. Because if, if all the brothers would just stop going to PWIs and say, you know what, we're going to go play football to HBCUs. Like I say those programs would, would, would tank overnight. And we know this. And the only reason why brothers and sisters go to these colleges is because they offer them full ride scholarships and the HBCUs got to figure out a way to offer full ride scholarships to our children so they can compete with the PWIs. So he said the athletic department is they cut ties with long time strength and conditioning coach, Chris Doyle, who received 1.1 million in severance agreement. It says several players accused Doyle of using racial slurs when addressing them. And of course he say he didn't do that. I say Brian Ferentz also alleged to have been abusive to players as well. Now this Chris Doyle guy was making $800,000 per year where he was the highest paid strength and conditioning coach in college football. Now they said former Iowa offensive lineman, James Daniels, who's with the Chicago bears was the first to raise the issue of Iowa staff treatment of players. He said there are too many racial disparities in the Iowa football program. He said black players have been treated unfairly and say for too long. Is what the brother said. I said former Iowa linebacker Terrence Pryor said Doyle had told him that he should take up rowing. Then he said, "Oh wait, black people don't like boats in water." He said, "Do they?" That's what he told the brother. Now he said former safety Deontay Morrow. He said said that Doyle told him he was sending them back to the ghetto. I said former defensive back Emmanuel Rugama uh, said that Doyle admonished a black teammate and then asked him why he walked with swagger. He said, then he told him, I'll put you back on the streets. Uh, Doyle told another teammate and, and the brother explained, he said that the kid comes from a happy home with both parents, you know, trying to think that all black kids come from single parent households. That's just not true whatsoever. When you know, we went to drop our daughter off at college, um, and everything, I seen a lot of uh, mo mom, mothers and dads together. So not every black child that grows up is in a single parent household, you know, but if you listen to freaking Fox news and any propaganda that the Bazungus put out, what you expect? The report said that many black players did not feel welcome or supported by the program as their players reported that they were long, not allowed to wear do rags, tank tops, earrings, and other jewelry in the football building. And were discouraged from getting tattoos or having certain hairstyles that black players said as they, they feel singled out, isolated and forced to suppress their personalities. They say for rents, eliminate rules on jury 
and hats and instructed the staff not to critique hairstyles or tattoos last year after an athletic department review raised racial bias concerns. And yeah, you know, anytime, especially, you know, the hair, let's talk about that. They are so threatened by black hair. Like, you know, it's, it's weird. You know, I mean, if you really think about it, it's beyond weird and just loony that you feel threatened by somebody else's hair on their head, not your hair, their hair. I don't care what somebody do with their hair it has nothing to do with me, but me, for instance, I'm growing my hair out. Right. And I actually, I'm loving every minute of it. Believe it or not. I am. Um, I like the versatility of what I can do with my hair now. Definitely as it keeps growing, I'm like, man, why didn't I do this sooner? You, you know what I'm saying? Um, to, to grow my hair out. But them folks don't like to see us with our hair growing out, you know, but, but they so obsessive. They say it's so obsessive. They say get over it. Cause brothers, brothers and sisters growing their natural hair out. And that, and that's something I believe that they need to stay. We don't need to conform to none of them. Forget them. They want to have a problem with our hair. Well, let's take, let's take that to court. Let's have a lawsuit for racial discrimination. Cause my hair ain't bothered no, nobody. I wish somebody would tell me I couldn't do something because of my hair, please. So in addition, they say the letter was asking for an additional 10 million to set up a fund established for the athletes, not including the eight former football players to compensate them for discrimination and ongoing severe and pervasive acts that constitute intentional discrimination where defendants is intended to treat African Americans differently. Of course, they're asking for attorney fees, mandatory annual anti-racist training uh, for all athletic department staff. I say the creation of permanent senior black male administration uh, position and tuition waivers for black athletes who attend uh, Iowa during for instance, 22 years and did not graduate. Okay. I mean, I, I definitely could rock with, with a lot of that, but this is the thing. These brothers need to win their lawsuit, but you know, we talk about getting on code. We have to also start talking to our children about getting on code. And we hear a university doing that to black players, then the word needs to go out. Okay, well, fine, no problem. We're not going to Iowa. Forget that. I said they got since they got these races up here in Iowa, let, let them folks uh, 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 be at Iowa. We don't need to be there. We go with somewhere we appreciate it. So when we can wear our hair, we can whatever we choose to do. We want to wear a tank top. We want a tattoo. Whatever we want to do is, is, is us, right? So that's the best way to get at them brothers is just to not go there. We need to, you know, have a, 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 a like, you know, I know they used to talk about a green book. I remember that. Um, but you know, to, you know, other people have tried to do that and oh boy, it, it's a backlash to that. Even in this day and time, when you let's say you have a website, let's say you create a website and say, look, stay away from these colleges, stay away from this particular areas in the city. Stay away from these particular businesses and here's why, you know, oh boy, they're getting their feelings because you know, you're calling them out and you just tell them black folks, Hey, just stay away from there. You're not telling them to do nothing more than that. Just avoid it because they do not want to separate from black dollars and they don't want to separate from black people much as they can't stand out behind. They don't want us separating away from them because every time we talk about, you know what? Okay. You don't like us over here. No problem. You keep it. We're going to go over here. Well, why you want to do that? Isn't that reverse uh, uh, racism? Isn't that like uh, uh, segregation? I mean, Martin Luther King fought against that. And now you guys want it back? Well, look at the way we're being treated. Like only a fool would be around people that don't like you. Only a fool would, would, would go and spend their money with people that treat you discriminatory. Only a fool would continue to go and play football for a university that don't have a good intention for black folks and they won't get rid of the white supremacists that's running around there. Only a fool would do that. And one thing that you guys got to understand, you got, I told you guys in that live stream that we, 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 um, produced the other night, you need to keep them out of our business. They don't have no opinions about what we choose to do. Whether we choose to go in this corner, that corner, well, we choose to go to the continent. If we choose to, is our choice or the Caribbean or Latin America, whatever we choose to go or, or, or no matter what we choose to do as black Americans, it's not their they business. It's not their business whatsoever. So 
we do need to be identifying these universities who have anti-black coaches, anti-black policies, and then say, okay, you, you identified as that we're not going, but leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about the situation with this lawsuit with these brothers. Um, I, I'm definitely, you know, want them to win this lawsuit nine seven out of 10. They probably would try to settle with them because they don't want to go to court, especially if they do discovery, they definitely don't want to do discovery. And you know, any, any lawyer would be smart enough to do discovery on all the coaches and, and, and they text messages and uh, trust me, that's when they really gonna want to settle because they don't want that out publicly. Um, like a case where you have public record, but we'll definitely keep our eye on this case. <music>